on the CBS Broadcast Center in New York. We've got a way of looking at life that's really great. A certain way of feeling life is should have a bowling team. <laughs> yeah, look, Ma, look, I'll talk to you later, okay? Look, okay, bye-bye. Hi, gang. Uh, has Tony been looking for me? No, I haven't seen her since she yelled at me before lunch. Because I'm late picking her up. My watch stopped. What happened? Did you spill a drink on it? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, yes. I'm always nervous when I meet a famous Ivy Leaguer like David Suskind. Oh, that's right! Tony's gonna go on his show this afternoon. And we're supposed to be at the studio in, uh, 30 minutes. Where is she? You know, you would never know that Tony was gonna be on television today. She didn't even mention it. That woman must have nerves of steel. And a heart to match. <laughs> Greg, what's the show about? Women who loved Hitler. <laughs> That's not fair, April. The subject of today's program is successful career women. Well, I'd better go and find Tony. I hate to keep David Suskind waiting. Oh, he's a Harvard man, you know. Really? He must be. He used the word dichotomy twice in one sentence. <laughs> Have a seat. I'll be with you in a minute. But Tony, we've Girls, got a... I would appreciate it if you would fix the artwork and copy on the Moulin Rouge ad before you leave tonight. Uh, gee, Tony, we won't get home in time to watch you on TV. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. But why don't you watch it here? Yes, girls. That way you can mix business with business. <laughs> oh, and April, I would like you to rewrite this, and I would like to have it first thing in the morning, huh? Which means? That you'll have to work late, too, darling. Well, that way you can all be here together to watch me. Oh, dog. <laughs> Aren't you nervous? Nervous? Oh. oh, no. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Tony, you haven't left yet. What is it, Eddie? Uh, you're taping a David Suskind show this afternoon, right? right? Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, Tony, I'm going to be watching you tonight with this dark-haired, um, healthy girl. <laughs> all you have to do is say on the air that the guy responsible for casting all the commercials here at Bedford is the fabulous Eddie Barnes. Look, Eddie, I would love to discuss your love life some more, but I've got to go. Everybody, how do I look? Great. Great. Adequate. <laughs> Let's go, Tony. Now, girls, I'm going to try to be back here in time to watch the show with you. But if I'm not back by 6 o'clock, please walk Flotsam. Give him a dog biscuit and a little kiss. In which order? Kiss, biscuit, walk. <laughs> oh, and uh, if the walk is successful, give him another biscuit. Well, ta-ta. Well, let's go. Jeepers, what is she doing? We've got to be at the studio in 15 minutes. There you are. I've been waiting for you in my office. Hold my coat, please. Thank you. <laughs> Jeepers, I'll have to button her up the back. Suskind show. I wonder why Tony didn't come back yet. She probably went straight home. Without flotsam? That's strange. Be thankful for small favors. <laughs> April, my love. After we watch the show, can I buy you a drink? Yes, I'd like that very much. You would? 
And be careful not to spill it when you bring it to the office tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, cool it, gang. Show starting. Good evening. I'm David Suskind, and my guests tonight are three women who've made it to the very top in the bastions of male supremacy. The first guest is Jennifer Darcy, former Las Vegas showgirl, currently the president and the editor of Real Woman Magazine. It's a pleasure to be here, David. Oh, it's a pleasure having you. And Norma Theron, she is councilwoman from Queens. Councilperson. <laughs> councilperson, OK. And Tony McBain creative director and senior vice president of the Bedford Advertising Agency. Are we on? <laughs> yes. mm, of course. Hello. She looks good. She looks scared. Welcome. Hello again, David. Hiya, yeah. Dave. No, no, it's David. There are some people you just don't call Dave. <laughs> OK, if that threatens you, I'll drop it. Hello, David. Thank you. My first question, ladies, is... Uh, uh, try women, Dave. Ladies is what you put on bathroom doors. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm proud to be called a lady, and I'm proud to go to the ladies' room. Uh, Tony, how about you? Is it ladies or, or women, as far as you're concerned? Yes. <laughs> is that it? Yes. <laughs> I think we'd better try another subject. Do you feel there's a femininity crisis among successful no. career women? Who cares about femininity? It's not important. It um, is so. If God didn't want us to be feminine, he wouldn't have invented the tweezer. <laughs> that is the biggest load of bull I Norma, please. <laughs> Now, all of you are single. That can't be a coincidence. Did you have to sacrifice a marriage in order to have a successful career? Let's start with you, Tony. Oh, uh, well, all right. Now, why isn't... <laughs> why isn't a beautiful and successful woman like you married? Well, I was married. And then, then after a while, I wasn't. <laughs> I guess that means that I'm... Uh, that I'm... Um... Divorced. How did you know that? <laughs> Um, was your career the thing that wrecked your marriage? Oh, no, no, <clears throat> no, absolutely not. Then what was it? Oh, I don't think you'd want to hear it. Yeah, I really would. You see, it's all part of the total picture. Well, the thing that, that really drove me crazy and, and really uh, hurt our marriage was, uh, at night, after I'd go to sleep, my husband used to draw faces on my body with lipstick. <laughs> Boy, that sounds weird. Bruno always used a magic marker. You know, there's the old cliche about the woman behind the man. I would be very interested in the man behind the woman. Now, what man helped you up the ladder of success, Jennifer? My husband. Uh. Malcolm. <laughs> he and I sort of helped each other. He taught me everything about publishing, and I taught him how to blow dry his hair. Uh, Norma, how about you? Well, I must admit there was one man that did help me. My recent opponent in the race for city council, Jake Beck. Really? What did he do for you? He got caught. <laughs> in a motel room by his wife. He was campaigning a little too vigorously, if you know what I mean. <laughs> No, not on television. Uh, maybe we ought to talk about advertising just for a little bit. Your agency, the Bedford Advertising Agency, is one of the biggest and most successful in the business, right? Oh, yes. Yes, since I've joined the agency, we've, uh, we've quadrupled our billings. And J.M. Bedford is really responsible for your entire career, right? J.M.? Oh, well, he gave me my start, but, but since then I've been on my own. That's not the impression I got from the research. What do you mean? Well... We discovered that every important decision, creative decision, is made by J.M. Bedford. Oh, no. Now, that's not true, David. Well, when we talked to him, Bedford claims that he would have retired a long time ago if he'd have found somebody competent enough to do the job that he does. J.M. said that? He said that your main function was looking pretty. What? Yes, I think his exact words were, Tony McBain is Bedford Advertising's token woman executive. He says that he's the one who does everything and runs things over there. 
Well, the only thing J.M. Bedford runs is the train set he keeps in his office. Mm. He shows up at, at board meetings wearing an engineer's cap and a whistle. That's hard to believe. Oh, it is hard. Oh, no. The man is senile, perverse, incompetent. <laughs> and he has an unnatural affection for cats. Maybe so, but he claims that you're totally dependent on him. Well, he's full of sh right on time. I have done my favorite. The only successful campaigns have been ones that I have done since I was creative director. And if J.N. Bedford doesn't like it, he can take oh, well, 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 it. No, 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 no. We have to pause. We'll be right back after this pause from the sponsor. You see that? Pony went absolutely bananas. I'd sure like to know what those bleeps were. I wonder what got into her. I believe it was both feet in her entire mouth. My troops. Craig, where's Tony? I don't know. I was hoping she came back here. She was talking to David while the commercial was on, and then she walked out. Well, I thought she went to the ladies' room. Well, after an hour, I got suspicious. <laughs> so I checked, and sure enough, she was gone. Well, I guess there's no need to watch this thing anymore. I was shocked. I haven't heard language like that since my wife was in labor with our son, Humpty. Uh-oh, that's got to be Mr. Bedford. Look, don't answer it. Maybe he'll think nobody's here. No, I'm going to answer it. I mean, just because he's buzzing doesn't mean he's angry. Yes, Mr. Bedford? Tony, can you hear me? Uh, this isn't Tony, Mr. Bedford. This is Julia Peters. Peter? Peter who? Julia Peters. Whatever you say. Go get Tony. Got to talk to her. Is everything all right, Mr. Bedford? Uh, listen, Peter boy, I want you to give Tony a message for me. Uh, okay, Mr. Bedford? Tell her she's fired. Did you get my drift? <laughs> Is fired? Oh, Mr. Mr. Bedford, I can't tell her that. Yes, you can, Peter. Either fire her or fire yourself. I gotta say goodbye. Got a railroad to run. All aboard. <laughs> Who is it? Julia, Maria, and Foster. Oh, how nice. Ooh. Did Flotsam miss his mommy? Mm. Hi, Tony. Thank you, children. Come in, come in. Ooh. I was just relaxing. Would you like something to drink? No, we're not going to stay long. I'll have one, Tony. Oh, good. That's uh, scotch, bourbon, vodka. I'll have those. Are you all right, Julia? Yes, yes, I, I'm fine. Good, good. Come in, come in. Oh, well, I guess you uh, saw the show. Uh, yes, we did. I saw it, too. <laughs> Good. Do you think I looked well? Oh, fabulous. You're the prettiest one. Even prettier than David Susskind. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, everybody liked it? Well, almost. Well, like, who didn't? Oh, well, I don't know, Tony. I'm sure that in a, a large city like this, there were a, a few people who didn't like it. Maybe Mr. Bedford, for instance. Oh, well, I was a little hard on J.M. <laughs> oh, but I can handle him. I tried to call him after the show to explain, but I couldn't get through. Well, he got through to us. Why oh. would you talk to him? What did he say? Uh, Tony, could I have that drink now? Oh, certainly. <laughs> yeah, Tony, make it a double. In two glasses. <laughs> oh, Marie, isn't that cute? A double in two glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? She doesn't know. Look, maybe we can just uh, get her to apologize. What did J.M. say when he called? Um, uh, J.M. Yeah. What'd he say? Well, he didn't say much. <laughs> well, what? Uh, a couple things. What? What are we gonna do? We gotta tell her. I don't wanna. Are we? I'm not going. Maria, this no is not my job. Uh, so what did he say? Uh, You're fired. What? You heard her. <laughs> You're kidding. Tony, I wouldn't kid about a thing like that. J.M. Bedford actually fired me? Yes, Tony. <laughs> Splendid. What a relief. You're relieved? Of course. This is probably the best thing that could have happened. 
it is. Oh, of course. I'm young. 40, uh, 30, uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, no, this is no tragedy. People are fired from advertising every day. Well, Tony, what you gonna do? Well, first, I'll do the windows and then the bathroom tub. <laughs> That sounds like fun, Tony. And then when I'm finished, maybe I'll go to Montana and do something I've always wanted to do. Be a shepherdess. <laughs> oh, look how you girls finished your drink so fast. <laughs> oh, and biscuits. <laughs> what? Biscuits. Flotsam and I haven't had our snack yet. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Bedford? Do it right next time, Peter. And that also goes for your partner, Mary. <laughs> yes, sir. This is not for publication, but I do miss Tony very, very much. Gee, April, what a nice thing for you to say. I thought you were glad Tony was gone. I was, until I realized that I am now the oldest woman on the staff. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but we got to go show this work to Mr. Bedford. Peter. OK, Murray, I'll call for an appointment. <clears throat> yes, hello? Raul? Hi, this is Julia Peters. Can Marie and I come in to see Mr. Bedford? Raul? Could you take the radio off your other ear? You can hear it right through his head. What? OK. What did he say? He'll call us back. Oh, we might as well wait by the shrine. Uh, Our master's voice. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bedford. Peter, is that you? Yes, sir. What are you doing calling my secretary and bothering him? I thought you wanted to see the Dento Bright copy. Of course I want to see it. Who do you think is running things around here? Next stop, Great Neck. <laughs> thing is driving me crazy. Oh, the old man bugging you? <laughs> well, you just don't know how to handle him. Handle him. Barnes? Yes, Mr. Bedford? You're late. You took 15 minutes extra for lunch. It's coming out of your check. <laughs> yes, sir. And get a haircut. You look like little orphan Annie. <laughs> With pleasure, Mr. Bedford. Hey, beauty, the beast. Yes, your highness. Baxter? Yes, sir. I don't like anyone working here who has a lower voice than me. Then either you or I will have to get shots. <laughs> Nothing. Listen to me, Baxter. I didn't like your copy for the Dino Pizza account. I like it. Pizza on Earth, goodwill toward men. <laughs> we don't make jokes here. You read me? Yes, Mr. Bedford. I redo it. <laughs> and may you grow a chicken farm in your stomach. <laughs> Guess what? What? I just saw Tony. Is she okay? Well, I'm not sure. She bumped into me in the hall and said, got a light sailor? She's really acting very strange. <laughs> Hello, you poor, miserable working people. <laughs> Tony, you okay? I feel marvelous. On the way over, I nearly stopped off for a few glasses of lunch. Oh, golly, Tony, old sock, you're really taking this whole thing very well. <laughs> oh, I've never been happier. But now I must go into my former office and remove some of my personal effects. I think she's swacked. Ah, oh, dear, beautiful, beautiful April. She may be swacked, but her eyes are still good. <laughs> okay, Benino, let's go. Where? We have got to talk her into apologizing to Mr. Bedford. Right. I mean, even though they're both monsters, I'd like it here a whole lot better when Tony is doing the monstering. Yep. We're going to have her call him right now. OK. Oh, oh, wait. Maybe we should check and see if he's still in his office. Oh, OK. Um, 
Mr. Bedford, are you still there? Brown, now it's my turn to play the passenger. <laughs> He's still there. Tony? Yes? We want to talk to you. About what? Uh, Tony, look, we don't want you to leave here. Oh, that's so sweet. You see, you were the one who took a chance on us and gave us our first real job. You see, we have nothing ahead of us here without you. Oh. Tony, that's J.M. Who cares? <laughs> Tony, answer it and apologize. Tony, we need you here. No, thank you, darling. But I can't apologize to him. He doesn't deserve it. Tony, this is where you belong. Tony, is that you? I know you're there. <laughs> All right, I'll try. Hello, J.L. Thought you could sneak up the freight elevator without me knowing it, didn't you? <laughs> I couldn't come up the front elevators. Your orders. That's right. I'm still running things around here, Tony. I just came in to clean out my desk. Good. Don't steal any pencils or paper clips, Miss Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Tony, don't you see he's begging for an apology? <laughs> mm. Can you hear me, J.M.? Yes, Tony. I'm sorry I said all those things about you on television. Good. I should have said them to you directly. <laughs> you had no business telling David Susskind that I was merely a token here. And if that's what you think I am, well, let me tell you what this token can do. Tomorrow morning, I could call every account that I brought into this agency, which is practically all of them, and take them with me when I leave. That was a dandy apology. <laughs> it was original. Yes, J.M. Tony, can you hear me? Yes, J.M. That's good, because I couldn't hear a word you were saying before. Pity, J.M. All I heard was the part where you said you were sorry. Should I repeat the rest? No, 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 no. no need to. All I want is an apology, not an opinion. What are you trying to tell me, J.M.? You can use the front elevators when you come to work tomorrow. What about this afternoon? No, tomorrow morning. If I wanted drunks running things over there, I would have given Craig your job three days ago. <laughs> Whatever you say, J.M. And another thing. Yep. Tell the new boy, Peter, if he keeps up the good work, he can use the executive men's room. <laughs> Who's Peter? I don't know. Ask Murray. <laughs> before a live audience. 